I'm Aaron Rutten, and today I'll be demonstrating how to use the brushes in my Harry Brush Pack for Corel Painter. You can download these brushes from my website at aaronrutten.com, and I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. I'll be using these brushes to demonstrate on this painting of a dog that I created several years ago. I already have my box file imported here, and so all my brushes are available in this panel. Some of the brushes can paint and some can blend. The blenders are all on the bottom, and the brushes that add paint are on the top. So I'm going to start with the fur blender, and we can use this to blend some of the paint that's already on the canvas. The paint that's here is kind of in an impressionist style, and it's kind of flat. So by painting over it with this brush, I can create these particles that create individual brush strokes that look like hairs. Now depending on how you tilt your pen, if your pen supports pen tilt, you can change the angle of these hairs or these brush strokes. So I've just painted right in between that light and dark color, and what that does is that creates a nice fur effect. Now I want to follow the contours of the dog's face and change the angle of the fur. You can also change the angle of your canvas to make it easier to get the correct angle. I'm being a little bit quick and sloppy about this for demonstration's sake, but you should take your time with this. Depending on the kind of animal you're painting, you're probably going to want to change the size or the scale of the fur. So I made my brush smaller, and now the hairs that I get are smaller and finer, because the hair on the muzzle should be smaller and finer. You can also use heavier pressure if you really want to blend things up, or lighter pressure if you just want to blend it up a little. The next brush that we'll try is called Curly Fur Blender. This is similar to the previous brush where you can tilt the brush and it creates individual hairs, but this creates hair that's a bit more irregular. It's not so straight and perfect. And again, changing the brush size changes the scale of the hair. Now on the far side of the muzzle, it actually wraps around, so you really wouldn't want to blend it like this. That actually messes it up and ruins the perspective. But I'll show you how to do it correctly later on in this lesson. Let's go ahead and switch to the fan fur blender now. When I paint with this brush, the hair fans out a lot more, so it's a different style of hair. You'll notice that I'm starting from the top and I'm blending down, and that's because I want the hair to kind of overlap. You don't necessarily have to do that. You could build up strokes on top of themselves if you want to. But that's just something to think about when you're putting in your hair, because hair kind of overlaps that way. You can go right along the edges too, and you can have the edges be softer and fuzzier. Now because this artwork is on a single layer, I'm accidentally blending the background too. If you don't like that, then you'll want to keep your layers separate before you blend. Now let's try the Messy Fur Blender. When I paint with this brush, I get fur that is very irregular and messy. And again, I can kind of build it up like this and get an even different effect. So now we have all these different types of fur for different types of animals. Now I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to turn on Pick Up Underlying Color, and I'll show you how you can blend the fur but keep it on a separate layer. I'll blend here on the muzzle because I want to blend the side of the face that's beyond the muzzle, but now what I want to do is switch to my eraser. I'll just hit N on my keyboard to do that, and I can erase the fur that's on the muzzle. Now you could use a hard edge brush like this, or you could use a soft edge eraser if you wanted to kind of fade it out, but this gives you an idea of how you can kind of erase some areas from your blending. Now that blending is on a separate layer. It blended, but it also picked up the paint on the layers underneath, so all of that paint now is on a separate layer. Now let's try the Wavy Fur Blender. As you might imagine, this blends the fur, but the fur is a little bit more wavy rather than being straight. Now you may see this effect more or less depending on how much fur you're blending. If it's only a little bit of fur, then you might not be able to see the curl and the wave as much, but if you're doing larger, bigger, broader patches of fur, then you might start to see that pattern emerge more. And again, because I'm painting on a separate layer with pickup underlying color on, I can blend over here on the muzzle, and if there's anything that I want to erase, I can just switch to my eraser, and I can erase wherever I overblended. Now let's try a different style of brush. This is called short fur strokes. Now these strokes are going to follow the direction of your brush stroke that you're making, so the brushes kind of go parallel to that. These brushes with strokes in the name are all going to perform the same, so you can use this to draw lots of hairs all at once. It's fewer hairs than you'd get if you were using the blender brushes, but you have more control over your strokes and you can kind of curve and contour them. Now of course these brushes are adding paint because they're the brushes that are on top, so I'll need to choose a color each time as I'm painting. I'm just holding alt and sampling local colors or colors that are surrounding the area that I want to paint on. I might make them a bit lighter so they show up on darker areas, or darker so they show up better on lighter areas. 
And as you can see, I can blend first and then add paint on top of that and then go back to blending and go back to adding paint. And it can be a nice back and forth process until I get something that I'm happy with. Let's try another brush that's called Short Straight Fur. Now this is going to work more like those blender brushes where the fur is going to spray out depending on the angle of your brush. But this is adding paint rather than just blending. So I can choose a color and then paint that in and get a lot of individual hairs all at once. I'm going to select medium straight fur and as you might imagine the hair length just changes a little bit and the hair gets a little bit different in its character whether you're using short, long, or medium hair brushes. So I'm just using a bit of this here on the muzzle and again it's kind of spraying out depending on the direction that I've angled my pen so I can get these really really fine whiskers here on the muzzle that would take much longer to paint one at a time. Now let's switch to a brush called body hair. You probably want to use this on a person to create some body hair, but you know what? We can use this to create hair that the dog shed and just kind of sprinkle it here and there in a few places because maybe there's some hair that doesn't follow the contour of the other hairs. A smaller brush has smaller hairs that are tightly clustered together. A bigger brush has bigger, longer hairs that are spread more apart. Now let's try the brush called Hair Thin. We can use this to draw whiskers for the dog if we use a very, very small, thin brush. You can also use this to draw long human hair, and if you kind of wiggle the brush as you paint with it, you'll see what I mean. I'm intentionally doing very slow strokes here so my bristles don't spread apart, but if you make your strokes slower, then of course they'll spread out more. But for pet portraits, this is great for whiskers or eyelashes or just individual hairs. Now let's switch to a brush called Hair Thick. This is very similar to Hair Thin, but the hairs are much thicker, so you can do kind of bigger clumps of hair that are still kind of thin and small. And just like the previous brush, if you move your brush around more wildly, then the hairs will spread out more. If you do thinner, more controlled strokes, then they stick together. Again, this is a good brush for painting human hair, but if I were gonna use it on a pet portrait, then I can use it for shorter clumps of longer hair on the face. Now let's try the brush called Thick Wavy Fur. If I test it on the dog, it's not quite the type of hair that would be on this particular type of dog or this particular type of animal. So I'll just use it here on the blanket. I'll sample some colors from the blanket until I find something that's lighter or darker that contrasts well with the underlying colors. And then I can also tilt my pen to find a direction that complements the direction of the fabric that I'm painting on. And I can make kind of a fuzzy blanket like this. Sample some of those light colors from the edge where the highlight is and put those in. Get some pink colors from the background and put those in. And I have a really nice blanket effect. But you might want to use this for animals that have softer, fluffier hair that's a bit more wavy. And then of course if I want to, because I'm painting on a separate layer here, I can always go to my eraser and I could use a very, very big, very soft eraser to kind of erase or fade in some of those details if I overdid it. You could of course also use a layer mask for this if you want a little bit more control. The next brush that we'll test out is called Long Fur Strokes. Now this is a stroke brush, meaning that you can pull in the direction that you want the hairs to flow, but these hairs are longer than the other brush that had shorter hairs. So as you can see, this pack gives you lots of options for painting and blending hair. Now I'm going to go back to the blender, I'm going to select the Wavy Fur Blender, and I can always blend over some of this. If I painted in some hair and I'm not happy with it, I can very easily blend over it and kind of fade it back in or just kind of get back to a point where I might want to add more paint over the top of that. Now I'm kind of intentionally overdoing it a bit here so I can show you how all of these brushes work. Your pet portrait doesn't need to use all of the brushes in this set, just use whichever ones are appropriate. I'm going to blend some of those smaller areas of the fur too, like the little spots that are darker on the muzzle. That really helps those blend in and look more like fur. And then the edges of the ears are kind of sharp, so I'll go ahead and blend those a bit using a smaller brush so I don't distort them too much. And then of course I'm angling my brush so that the hairs kind of fan out in the right direction. I'm just using my imagination here, but you'd probably want to consult a reference photo if you're not sure which direction those hairs should be flowing. The worst thing you can do is paint and have the hairs go the wrong direction because that's just going to look really weird. Well, let's do some of those smaller, finer hairs around the eyes. Just make sure that you don't blend over your eyes because eyes are not furry. And then we don't want to forget that background ear. There's a couple areas that are still too sharp and I'll go ahead and blend those. And with a few more final touches here, 
think we have a finished demonstration painting and you have a good idea of how these brushes can work for painting pet portraits and other types of hairy creatures. You can download these brushes from my website at aaronrutten.com and check out some of my demonstrations of other custom brushes I created. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.